G'day guys, I've got a question today where we're going to just go over using calculus to determine the stationary points or local minimums and maximums of particular functions. Now I've got a quite an easy question here today so we can just go over the process. Now to start with, let's just remember um, what a stationary point is or a turning point of a function. So basically a stationary point is when we have a function, let's just say it just looks like this. So this is our y equals f of x. Our stationary point is this point here. So the reason we call it a stationary point is because at this point the derivative of the function is equal to zero. And that's because it doesn't have any gradient at this point. There is no rate of change at the stationary point, hence stationary. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this fact to find the stationary points of this function using calculus. To start with, hopefully you guys have a pretty good grasp of how to differentiate functions. So I'm not going to go through that in this video. I have many other videos on that. So if you want to have a look at them, I'd suggest you part ways with me now and check them out, but we're going to use calculus to differentiate this and so we're going to get dy dx equaling 3x squared minus 18x plus 15. Cool. Now, at the stationary points, we know that the derivative is equal to 0, so we're going to make that equal to 0 straight off the bat. So that's our first step. We get take the derivative, set it equal to zero. Now here, then we have to, now I'm going to write a little notes for ourselves. So here, the next thing that we have to do is we have to solve for x. Cool. So let's go about doing that. So here you're just going to need to do a little bit of factorization, a little bit of algebra. So let's go about it. Let's factorize to start with by three. 3x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. Now we're going to have to factorise the quadratic that we have in the brackets. Now going back a few years, this is just a, what adds together to give negative 6 and multiplies together to give positive 5. So we're going to have 3 in brackets x take 1, x take 5 equals 0. And then we're going to use the null factor law. This doesn't stand for National Football League, null factor law. X is going to equal 1, or X is going to equal 5. Cool. So from here, now what we have to do is we have to, we found what the X coordinates are of our stationary points we have to find out what our y coordinates are. So we have to, the next step is we're going to find the y values. Cool, so let's go about doing that. So we're going to substitute in x equals one into our original function, and we're gonna have y equals one cubed is one, minus nine times one squared is 9 plus 15 plus 4. So 15 plus 4 is 19. Take 9 is 10 plus 1 is 11. So we have our first point. Let's call it A, where we have 1, comma, 11. All right. And on to the next one. So we're going to sub in 5. So we're going to have y equals 5 cubed, which is 125, minus 9 times 5 squared. Well, 25 times 9 is going to be 225, plus 15 times 5 is 75, plus 4. Cool. So 225 taken away from 125 is negative 100, plus 75 is negative 25, plus 4 is negative 21, negative 21, cool, 
So, we have our second point. It's called B. And that's 5, comma, negative 21. Alright, so we have our two stationary points. Now, what we have to do from here is we have to determine whether they're going to be maximums or minimums, local maximums, local minimums. Because we have a cubic function, you can see that this one here is the maximum and this one here is the minimum, but I'm going to show you the method that we would use if we don't really know what one is which. So what we're going to do, let's just separate these out. Uh, put a line here. Cool. So we're going to determine, so this is what we're doing here of this, and then we're also going to find and there. nature. So basically whether they're minimums or maximums. So to start with what we're going to do is we're going to take the second derivative of this function which tests for concavity. So we're going to go uh, d squared y over our dx squared and that's going to be equal to the derivative of our first derivative which is here. So 6x minus 18 And we are going to evaluate this at the two x points that we have. So let me just write some notes. We're taking the second derivative for concavity. So let me just write down here with concavity. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this second derivative at both of these x points. So we're going to have d squared y over a dx squared evaluated, sorry, at x equals 1. And that's going to be equal to 6 times 1 is 6, take 18, is equal to negative 12. So, because it's negative 12, so you could say as negative 12 is a less than 0, function is concave down. So if it's concave down, it looks like this red one that we've got up here. So you can say point A, which is 1, 11, is a local max. Cool, and then we're going to do exactly the same thing but with x equals 5. So I'm going to change colour just so I can have it separate from the other stuff down here. So I'm going to go d squared y over dx squared evaluated when x is equal to 5. And that's going to be 6 times 5, which is 30, minus 18, which is equal to 12. And again, we're going to use exactly the same wording as this. We could say, as 12 is greater than 0, the function is concave up. We, then you can say point B, which we've called 5, comma, negative 21, is a local minimum. So if the function evaluated at the stationary point, if the second derivative is less than zero, it's concave down. And if it's concave down, it's going to be a maximum. If, it, if you evaluate it and it's positive, it's going to be concave up. So it's going to look like this. And as a result, you're going to have a minimum. So 
I guess those are the um, that's the quick methodology run through for finding stationary points and their nature of basic functions. Now, as the functions get more complicated, the actual steps don't change. It's literally just the complexity of the differential and the complexity of the algebra to find the second derivative, I guess. But I hope this video helped, guys. You know, if you have any problems, you know, feel free to send me a message. Um, I like having excuses to do new videos. But, um, you yeah, know, also if the video helped, you know, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy your maths.